In this video, we'll see how to compute the future value of annual deposits. Unlike the previous case, this time we are not having just one single deposit, but five different deposits, each happening at the start of uh, each of five years. So there, these are five different uh, yearly intervals. The year zero refers to today, and year one refers to one year from now, and so on. And $100 is the amount that's received today, and one year from now, two years, three years, and four years from now. And our goal is to compute the future value of all these cash flows at the end of the fifth year. So how do we do that? Well, the very first deposit of $100 incurs interest for all five years. So um, the $100 that was received at the zeroth year will become $127.63, assuming an interest rate of 5%. And uh, being compounded over five years. So using the formula that we saw in the previous uh, lesson, uh, the amount is $100 times one plus the interest rate raised to the power five because this $100 was paid five years ago. Similarly, the amount that was paid four years ago or at the end of the first year will be $121.55 and the reason for that is because it's $100 compounded over four years at a 5% interest rate. And similarly for this uh, amount received at the end of the second year, end of the third year, and end of the fourth year. Now we'll take a look at how to actually compute the future value in uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So let's say you have uh, year zero, one, and all the way to five, and you have $100 being paid out at the start of each year. We want to compute um, the future value of each of these cash flows. So the first cash flow of $100, the future value will be computed like this, the cash flow times one plus the interest rate raised to the power of five here, because uh, this particular cash flow has been compounded over five years. So you need to have you need to have the interest rate compounded over five years. And I am now going to copy this formula all the way down. And now you can see that after performing a similar calculation over all the other cells, you have the total future value. And uh, you can also compute this now using the future value function of Excel. So equals FV, um, the rate is the interest rate, which is in the cell B1. The number of periods is five. The payment amount is $100. So I'm just going to click C4. And the present value of these cash flows is zero uh, because we start out with zero dollars. And, and the type is that these payments are being paid out at the beginning of each period. So I'm just going to put a one here. If you press enter, you can see that the amount is identical to this, except that the sign is different. And the reason the sign is different is because the amount of cash flows of $580.19 is in the opposite direction of the cash flows uh, here, the $100 cash flows. So if you deposit these $100 bills in the bank, then you will get back this amount at the end of five years. Or if you borrow these amounts in each of the five years, then you will have to repay this amount. If you want to force this to be positive, you can just put a minus sign here and it'll become positive. This was a little uh, difficult to perform because I could not copy and drag this formula all the way down, but I can do that now here in a slightly different uh, format. Okay, so here, let's say you're um, zero, one, two, three, four, and five and I put $100 and I just copy this all the way down. The future value is equals 100 times one plus the interest rate raised to the power of five minus the number of years, the number of the year. Okay, so the advantage of this way of framing this is that I can actually copy this formula down. So for example, let me make this into the dollar sign so that I can copy this properly. Now I can just double click on this and um, each of the different $100 amounts for each of the different years has its future value computed here and we can just convert this into dollars. And so we can just say total is the sum of all these five amounts, which is identical to the future value amount here. So that's just another way of computing this, but the concept is just the same.